I am going to be exploring romanticy. If I didn't know that this was supposed to be romanticy, I would assume that this was just any other YA fantasy chosen one book. It's not done. Like this is a draft. This shouldn't have been published. They still found ways to get down to business and like, come on. Like the word I'm wanting to say, say is melodramatic and I don't think that's quite the right word. <laughs> Today, I come to you from the snowy climbs of Nashville, Tennessee. So uh, I am in the middle of what has been a big, like, snowy whatever uh, cold front throughout the U.S. here in mid-January, and I'm in the mood for something cozy today. I've got this, and I just, I feel... Feel like I want to do some coziness and I was thinking about the different kinds of projects that I could start or work on and I decided I'm gonna start a project early that I hadn't planned to do until I think February but we're just gonna go ahead and do it and that is I'm going to be exploring romanticy. Now what is romanticy? This is part of like let's talk about this because this is part of what I want to interrogate, arrive at a conclusion of. So I am starting with a hypothesis, which is romanticy, I think, is a distinct type of book from what I would describe generally as fantasy romance. Now, I have some ambivalence about the term itself. Romanticy feels like sort of a cheap portmanteau that feels a little cutesy, but then I think about something like science fantasy, like I think we do these kind of genre cutesy namings for a few things, so I'm gonna go with it. Uh, and I am on record for years, like talking beginning of my booktube channel, I would get very frustrated with people who would say that they don't like romance, but then would be constantly talking about like Sarah J Maas and Cassandra Clare and all of those. It's like, you do like romance. You just have internalized misogyny usually about saying that you like romance. So like say that you like it and then you'll be able to find more books like this because you'll have good language for it. So I'm actually very excited that this is what has been happening. I think in general, there has been a very big destigmatization of romance novels in the last decade, which is basically how long I've been reading romance. <laughs> like I think saying that you read romance reads socially, like has a different kind of social valence to it now than it did 10 years ago. I love that because people should read what they want to read. We're all on a rock floating in space that we're slowly killing. Like, enjoy what you want to read while we're here. Like, come on, let's get real here. I'm not here for snobbery when it comes to what people like to read. Other than like, pl I, I, I can be playfully snobby. I think that's fine. But like, my core belief is people should read what they want to read. Okay, so I am actually quite excited that Romanticy is having a moment because I feel like all of those Sarah Janet girlies are finally like living their best life out in the open with no fear and no apologies. But I have been surprised at the things that are being like, when I was saying, hey, you should start reading fantasy romance at the beginning of booktube, I had a very different kind of book in mind than what seems to be being grouped under romanticy. And that makes me think that these are actually two sister genres rather than the same genre. So when I think fantasy romance, I am talking about adult fantasy romance. And I'm talking about something that is more romance than fantasy, but is set in a fantasy world, does have speculative elements, like is a fantasy novel, but like there is a central couple, there is an HEA. And also fantasy romance can have a wide variety of kind of tones to it. So for example, two of my favorite fantasy romance authors would be Ruby Dixon and Katie Wilde, who are pen names for other authors that I love, but let's just talk about what they're doing in those two. So Ruby Dixon has an Anchor and Aspect series, which while it does have like intense moments that kind of go along with the fantasy genre elements, uh, it is pretty lighthearted. Like there's a lot of humor um, and the protagonists are coming from our world and are sort of being portaled into the fantasy world. So like they have some commentary on what's going on in the fantasy world based on living, you know, in 2024 America normally. So there's that tone versus the Deadland series from Katie Wilde has like a higher angst tone. Like it's more 
serious. It's not, I wouldn't say it's serious, serious, but it's more serious as opposed to, uh, another one that comes to mind is Mila Vane. Mila Vane is also a pit name for Katie Wilde. Shh, don't tell. Um, I have, I have that on good authority and had already guessed that for years prior to that happening. So I can't promise you because I haven't done the Library of Congress research, but let's say I'm 80% sure they're the same author. But the Mila Vane books are an even more serious and more intense version of what Katie Wilde is doing. So like, let's call Katie Wilde that series in the middle. Um, and the Mila Vane ones I do think have a higher angst to them, but they, they read, it's more that they read serious than they read angsty. So that's kind of what I think of when I think of fantasy romance. I'm thinking of an adult fantasy. I'm thinking usually um, episodic in the sense of couples are getting their happily ever afters in this in one book. And then there are companion novels following other characters. That's that's usually what I'm thinking of when I think of fantasy romance. Romanticy, if I am reading correctly, like kind of interpreting Oh, sorry, my foot is falling asleep. Um, if I'm interpreting what I'm hearing about those books correctly and what I know of them, I would describe those more as new adult fantasy romance. And they are, a new adult to me, one of its hallmarks is angst. And also having protracted uh, romantic plot lines. So it's not, it's, I think, less typical to have couples getting together in one book. And it's more that they're on sort of like an epic love story over multiple books. That seems to be more what is common. And then, like I said, it's just more, it, it reads like younger, the protagonists read younger, it's angstier. Uh, and there's less smut because the love stories are taking so long. So like there's less in a given book, there's less sex. Like the fact that in Sarah Janet's original, like in Akatar or whatever, the fact that people know like the t the chapter where they finally do it, I'm like, well, any any self respecting fantasy romance, it would be chapters. Like once once the, you know, once you pop that cork on that champagne, it's flowing, you know, uh, and that's kind of less. It seems like the vibe in in. Romanticy. So all that being said, I'm kind of curious to test if that is an accurate hypothesis. If I do think that there's something meaningfully different between what is now being called romanticy and what I would have traditionally thought of as fantasy romance. And uh, I also want to see if I like it. I, I haven't really tried things that are under the romanticy label. So here's what we're going to do. And the reason I've chosen a snowy day to start this is because this feels very cozy. Like these all seem like they're going to be fun, cozy books. Well, I say that. If they're high angst, we'll find out. But anyway, I wanted to start this day because I knew the book I wanted to read and it was the first book I want to read for this. Because what I want to do is I want to bookend my romanticy with two books that I know I think of as fantasy romance. So I'm going to start with, I believe it's The Midsummer Bride by Katie Wilde, because that's a series I know and love. I know I think of that as like kind of a middle of the road fantasy romance in terms of its angst and its smut and all of that. So we'll start with that and then we'll end after I've read the four books we'll talk about here in a second. I'll end with the other Katie Wilde that came out in 2023, which I believe is called The Harvest Bride. So that way I can have kind of an immediate comparison before and after the four main books uh, to test my hypothesis against. So what are those four books? Well, I come to you influenced. I confess that I am influenced. I, so I don't know if you guys watch booktubers with whom you rarely have the same opinions or rarely like the same books, but you just enjoy, you just enjoy them. Like there's a spectrum. So for instance, I love watching Ashley from Bookish Realm. She and I read a lot of the same books or the same kinds of books, and we often have similar thoughts about them. She's one of the people I point to when I'm like, if you want someone like me, she's to me one of the people I think of as a go-to with the exception of mystery. That's kind of where we don't overlap. So, you know, I can trust her recommendations. We have similar taste, similar kind of books we'll pick up. Uh, for mystery, I would say like Meg with books is that person of like, we have very similar taste and we pick up a lot of the same books. So there's that spectrum. And then there's people who I love their content. I love the way they talk about books, but like, we don't have a very high overlap on the books we pick up and we don't always agree on them. And that is who has influenced me today because I was watching her read the Romanticy category top 10 for Goodreads. It was a great vlog and just the way she was talking about them, I was like, am I gonna read these? Like she's kind of selling me on them. So I confess on the front end that Olivia from, 
Olivia rates a latte. May have steered me wrong. In general, this may be a bad idea. I don't know. If so, it is not her fault. It's only insofar as she's such a good salesperson for these books that she convinced me to pick them up. Uh, but I go into this knowing that maybe we're not going to agree on these books or whatever. But the books that she enjoyed, she sold me on. So one of them I don't have in physical form because I'm going to read it on KU, which is also where I'm going to get the Katie Wilde books. But um, that one is one of the Carissa Broadbent ones that got recommended. And I have seen Carissa Broadbent all over TikTok. People love her books. So I'm curious to give that one a try. I think it was like slaying the vampire conqueror or something there's like the fancy cover and then frankly the cover i like better which is like very campy and looks more like a fantasy romance to me but so we have those two we have a lighter toned one so i think this will be good to challenge my overall conceptions but assistant to the villain by hannah nicole mayerer uh, this one I think is a little campier and I always joke that this to me looks like the Brandon Sanderson secret project covers. So in my mind, this is Brandon Sanderson's romanticy. Um, but I think that this will be fun and it has a map, I think like a fun map in here. That's fun. And then like the fun sprayed edges. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I'm hoping I like this frankly, cause I just like the way it looks. And, uh, this one I think is sort of a, the bad guys getting together. Like, I think she is the assistant to the villain in this fantasy world and they're going to fall in love. So that sounds like fun. Uh, so this is like a lighter hearted version of one. And then two that I think are not lighthearted and I think read much more like traditional fantasy from what she was saying. So I'm going to, that's another thing. I do think romanticy tends more to be a fantasy novel with a strong romantic component versus a romance in a fantasy world. So that's another hypothesis I have because I've heard both of these are very strong on the fantasy parts. So uh, Sarah Hashem, The Jashad Heir. This one, I saw so many people talking about how they didn't even think it belonged in the romantic category, that it was just a straight up fantasy. So we'll see, but she loved it. And I've, I saw so many people when I was doing the live reactions talking about how much they love this book. So we'll see about that. And then the hurricane wars by Tia, Tia Guanzon. Uh, I've heard great things about this as well. And I've heard like, if I'm going, okay. So if I'm guessing the two that I think are going to be most prototypically what I think of when I think of romance, I think it's going to be the hurricane wars and the Carissa Broadbent one. And then, uh, maybe these two are going to kind of test like the more fantasy side of things versus it being more romance. And this is going to be a little like lighter versus the angst. So anyway, all that being said, I feel like I have a good representative sampling of what romance has to offer books that all of these live sold the hell out of them. And all of these I am looking forward to reading. I think I am going into this expecting I'm going to like all these books. So I'm gonna be sad if I don't. Um, but I'm going into it with high hopes. And even knowing that sometimes she and I don't agree on these books, they all sounded appealing to me. So definitely go check out her video and watch that full vlog because I thought it was great. Um, and also I'm just excited to see how I get on with sort of like an emerging category, an emerging subgenre. So let's do this. First, I need to go uncover my car probably and put some more salt down. So I'll do that, but also let's do some reading, shall we?
so the snow is gone, sadly. Uh, but we have finished a book and we are a good way through another. So I thought I would talk to you guys about it before I'm about to, to dive back into the one I'm a good way into. So I did finish whatever that Katie Wilde book was, The Something Bride, The Midsummer Bride. Haha, -ha, I remembered the plot point of why she's called that. <laughs> Um, and it was wonderful. It was a four, verging on a four and a half. Um, God, yeah, Katie Wilde just gives me what I want. So the setup for this particular entry in the series is that we have the queen of this realm in this ye fantasy world, and uh, her uncle has usurped her throne and cursed her. So she is dying. But she, there is this witch who has given her a prophecy that if she finds a barbarian from the Deadlands, and this whole series is called the Deadlands, she can find him. Like there's, he has like there's certain parameters, and his axe will fell her uncle if she marries him and brings him back. So she finds this barbarian, and he's in jail, and she gets him out uh, and he agrees to go along with it because she is wearing these rings that are sacred to his religion that his people have been looking for because without the rings on the goddess's statue in their temple, everybody is getting this stone sickness where they slowly turn to stone, which is kind of fun. I mean, horrifying, but like a fun thing. So he's like, bet we can get married, but I'm gonna kill you as soon as I can and take these rings right back to my people. And then complications and love ensue from there. It was so good. It just had the right, it had like a sousson of angst, like it had a little bit, but it also wasn't like miscommunication BS. And I thought they were super sweet together. And I thought the plot, like the external conflict worked really well. And like, figuring out what's going on with the curse and her uncle and how it all comes together. It just was what I want from fantasy romance. I thought it was great. It had enough world building that like things were fun and cool and you could tell you were in a fantasy world, but it had just as much emphasis on the romance as the fantasy part. So for me, the balance was right. And this is, like I said, just what I think of when I am thinking of fantasy romance is something like this. There's also an HEA, so they get their, you know, their story is concluded in this one book, but each book in the series is following a different couple. So, loved it. Good way to start this video. I am now in the, the Hurricane Wars by Tia Guanzon. Guanzon? I am conflicted about this so far. So I'm 146 pages in. I'm at part two. If I didn't know that this was supposed to be romantic, I would assume that this was just any other YA fantasy chosen one book. I would not know that this was going to be a romance per se. Yeah, you can tell that there's some romantic tension potentially. It's not like that would come totally as a surprise to me if that's how the story progressed, but it doesn't really read like a romance. It reads like a fantasy and a YA fantasy at that. So the main character is named Talia, right? Ta Talison, sorry, they call her Kat. Tal sometimes. Talison, and she is a light weaver, which is a special, <laughs> like she's a special. And her, she's like in this army fighting the Night Empire. And the Night Empire has this like horrible emperor who's really evil and trying to take over the continent. And he has a son named Alaric. And she, you know, at the beginning of the book, they get like are in combat and he realizes she's a light weaver. And so he takes her or he like, they keep confronting each other. Eventually they get kidnapped and like behind enemy lines for both of them because she's on his mission. And then like things ensue from there. I don't know what to think so far. I think the writing is nice. Like if I'm thinking about this as a YA fantasy, I would be fine with this. But like, is there anything special about this? No, I mean, the writing is good. So I appreciate that. But romance, like, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm also, I'm an absolute idiot. I never realized that there was a face right here and I just saw it. I always thought there was a weird blob on this cover. I just realized that that's a face. Okay, well, I'm an idiot. Anyway, am I mad at it? No. 
do I see the romance yet? No. So I don't know quite what to think about this. I will keep going and we'll see what happens. But if they only kiss in this and this is freaking supposed to be for adults, like, come on now. I mean, in Midsummer Bride, they were finger blasting. They were kind of lingusing. They were, you know, getting to getting all over the place. Even when her was too tight to be, you know, um, because she was wearing these rings that like protect her body and they were magically keeping it. They still found ways to get down to business and like, come on. I just, I don't know. It's not even so much that the smuttiness is what I want to read. It's more that it's a signal to me that these are adults. And I don't know. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. But she is 20. So the new, the new adult thing, minimally, I'm absolutely correct on. Okay, anyway, let me keep going. I am enjoying the writing. It's not that I'm having a bad time in this. I'm just like, donde esta the romance? Let me know. day started but I thought I would check in and tell you the final thoughts on the hurricane wars this man okay very thought-provoking so first of all this is the first Raylo inspired book where I can actually see the inspo because people always talk about Allie Hazelwood as being right and I know she came from that fan fandom and that's where she got her origins and you can see some of the like, you know, inspiration bits of that. I, you know, I'm not saying you can't, but it's a contemporary romance. And like, they're not enemies. The first, I'm talking about the first book. They're not enemies. He's just tall and looks like Adam Driver. Like that's, I mean, otherwise it feels like kind of more of a Lizzie Darcy dynamic, which is often what I think contemporary romance versions of things that people say are Raylo come off as. This, because it's in a fantasy world, this is Raylo. <laughs> so he's, he's dark and moody and shadow whatever magic and she's the light weaver, you know what I mean? And they have like the connection moment and she's got a backstory that matches some of Ray's stuff and he's got a backstory that matches some of Kylo Ren's stuff. Like it's pretty clear. So I just thought that was interesting because this is the first time that I'm like, okay, this I will accept as people saying like, that's just Raylo. I will accept this. It actually is clearly very heavily inspired by that. I don't, okay, like possibly problematic thing. I don't understand why people are so upset about the Raylo thing. If you want to give me a synopsis, I'll take it of like what the problematic element there is. Like, is it just that he's like a dark bad boy and she likes him? Like, I don't know. I, I, I truly am a little confused about what the people have. I've had people leave comments being like, I can't watch you anymore because sometimes you read Raylo inspired romance and I'm like, problematic? I don't know. <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know. So interested. If you have feedback on that, I would like it'd be interested in hearing it. But anyway, so I was thinking about that in this of like, OK, this is the first time I'm reading something that feels very Raylo. I will say that most of this feels like YA fantasy, like a pretty competent version of YA fantasy. Like I think it's well written, but like this is chosen one YA fantasy. And then at the end, I guess it's like, well, no, not a spoiler, but just like then smut happens. And I'm like, I, I, are they allowed to do this? I mean, technically he's 26 and she's 20, but they read like teens. And I, it felt a little uncomfortable to be totally honest. Like the, the smut, 
in question I thought was pretty good. There's some dirty talk that I was like, oh, now I see this, this does feel like fan fiction dirty talk and I'm, I'm here for this. So that I thought was good, but it felt kind of jarring to me because I wasn't really thinking of these people as being very adult-like. And so for them to be banging, I felt like I was kind of a pervy old lady. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, it's, I, I'm very supportive of YA books having sex represented in them because, like, I think that's an important part, obviously, of most people's developmental, you know, the life, the circle of life, you know? So I think that's important. But in YA... I would expect sex scenes to not be graphic and to not have kind of the intent to titillate, which I think is kind of some of what, when I say something is smutty, like there's some level of an intent to titillate. So for me to be in the mode of YA and then have that intent introduced into the text, like I, I it was quite jarring to me. So if this is what romanticy is like, I think I'm about to be clutching my pearls far more than I do for like, I don't know, much kinkier sex scenes <laughs> that I have encountered in my romance reading career because it doesn't feel like it's adults. And so I'm like, uh, oh, I feel like I should not be part of this. So anyway, that um, is kind of my impressions coming out of this. This was, I, I don't think I'm going to continue in the series because it's a trilogy. If it was a duology, I would read another book, but I believe it's a trilogy. So maybe I'll get the third one from the library and read the epilogue just to confirm to myself that they end up together. Though that will be an interesting test, which is something that I don't feel like I know fully yet in Romanticy. Part of the definition of a romance is that they must end up together. Like that, that is in the formula. The love story has to be a central plot element. So you can have other things going on like this, where there's like this fantasy plot happening, but the romance has to be a central plot element and they have to end up together either permanently or for now. So I'm going to be curious as I go through these, if there are HEAs in these series. And I don't know if we know that yet for some of these big popular ones, if they're going to actually end up really qualifying as a romance. And that's the definition of like the RWA, like the Writers Association of Romance. And in the academic study, the HEA is a part of the genre. So I will be interested to see if these series follow that now that I'm, I hadn't thought about that. But anyway, so I will check in uh, to the third book's epilogue to confirm that they are together and probably pregnant, um, if it's like in most romances. <laughs> so um, I will check in on that, but I don't think I'll, I, I don't feel like I need three books worth of this. Um, but this was solid. I would give it three and a half, and I can definitely see the appeal. I had a fun enough time reading it more as a YA fantasy than as romance, but um, it was, it was well written and, and solid. So this, I, I think I picked this one because my hypothesis is this is the most what I think of as romanticy. Like this is what I was expecting in most ways romanticy to be like. So this is my control. And so far I would say romanticy is different than fantasy romance. Um, but we will see if that holds because my next one is going to be assistant to the villain. And I believe that one has like a lighter tone, like more of a comedic tone. So be interested to see how that goes but I'm gonna go make myself some coffee get my day going and I guess I'll get started on assistant to the villain tonight maybe sometime soon
quick check-in, I have started Assistant to the Villain, which so far I like the writing and characters okay, but the world I don't think makes a ton of sense. So we'll see. This may be one where the, it's more romance, satisfying as a romance than it is as a fantasy. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. But I also just wanted to mention quickly that I happened to read Sword Heart as a part of a different video and it was just amazing. This is what I think of when I think of fantasy romance. Like this is what I want. This is what I mean. It's two grown ass adults like fully. They're both I think like late 30s, early 40s. They've lived a life. They are adults. They're dealing with adult situations. It doesn't feel overly, I don't know. It's, I feel like YA has a very specific kind of angst to it that comes from being young and not having had a lot of life experiences yet. And I guess that kind of angst, I just don't necessarily want in an adult book, something that's pitched at adults. And this does have angst, but it's not like it's, it feels like adult angst, I guess. But it's also so funny and the banter's great. So I guess that also ties in good as a pairing with assistant to the villain. Uh, but anyway, this was not planned for this vlog, but I did want to mention that this is another great example, in my opinion, of what I think of when I think of adult fantasy romance. I just, I, I love this. So I felt like I had to pop it in another video since it was appropriate. Good morning. How are you guys? I hope you're live, laugh, loving. I am still waking up but it's Saturday, so we love that. And uh, yeah, gonna make myself a little coffee, a little latte. Um, but yeah, okay, so I finished two, well, I finished an ID and aft. Okay, I finished The Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. I have mixed feelings. So like the project of this, I'm way into. The idea of it being kind of like funnier or lighthearted, uh, you know, and a, and a take on the bad boy um, of falling in love with the bad guy. I feel like that's such a thing, especially in YA fantasy ships, that people are always like, but why aren't you in love with the villain who's killing the whole world? Like, whatever. I, I think that that's like a fun concept of just leaning into that but from like a lighter hearted approach um and I think the idea of where the plot goes is interesting but I think that this was so if this was self-pubbed I would give it three stars but the fact that this went through a traditional publishing process where the book should have had a full developmental edit I have to give it two and a half stars because it's just it's not done like this is a draft this shouldn't have been published it's just a little it feels like a collection of scenes rather than a full book and I feel really bad for the author because I think that they are popular on TikTok so my guess is this was a rush job or like something they weren't really taking that seriously to make it better because they knew it would sell and that's really too bad i hope this is a debut so i'm hoping maybe the next books will get better um but i won't know well will i know i definitely wouldn't buy another one of these mm, the way i really liked the actual like literal ending of this i thought it was very yeah it's where i would i would want the trajectory of this first book's plot to go. So I am low-key kind of interested in the next books, but they will be library books, if anything. And I really wish this was a duology instead of a trilogy. But, you know, I do think that this validates my ongoing theory that a lot of romanticy is very slow burn, very... And, that, and, and I guess in that sense kind of YA because it just, I haven't seen the culmination of a lot of the burning, whereas more traditional adult romance, you get a little bit more payoff to the burn earlier in the books or earlier in the book series. I am noticing, I think I said this up top, but like there are a lot of like one couple over the whole series. Not that that doesn't exist in adult romance, but I would say that's less popular. I think it's more common to have different couples in each series of the book. 
or each book in the series. So I think that's interesting. And it's not my preference. So that probably is also playing into this a little bit. I do love a slow burn, but I tend to like maybe more of like a Mariana Zapata approach to a slow burn where like, yeah, the book is fucking long, but you get resolution in that one book versus this is more of like series slow burn. So I'm seeing that as a theme. Uh, in contrast to the book I DNF'd. And the funny thing is, is that the book I DNF'd, I think, is the closest I've gotten so far to what I think of as fantasy romance. But the tone and writing is just not for me. It's it's well done. It's just not for me. And that is Sworn to the Vampire Conqueror, whatever the Chris of Broadbent one was. So I got mm, probably about 20% into the Kindle book. That seems about right. And I just was like not vibing with it. It's not a tone I like. It's very, like the word I'm wanting to say for, say is melodramatic. And I don't think that's quite the right word. Highly emotional style. It's just not, it's not hitting my reading ear well, but it's well done. Like it's a good version of what it is. The setup is that it's a, you know, I can't, well, this maybe was my other critique. I don't know if this is like into a series, so maybe that's my bad if it was. I should look that up. But it kind of just drops you in and like, I didn't really have much of a sense of what the real world building situation was. But anyway, our main character is a seer and she has a sight mother, which I think that is a cool name for like your orders hierarchy. But anyway, she has been tasked to infiltrate this vampire conqueror's household and become his seer and then kill him. Like she's an assassin. So I think that the assassin thing is definitely very YA. Like that's definitely a big YA trope in the last few years. Thank you, Sarah Janet. Um, but it is an adult book for sure. Cause like when I, <laughs> so um, often if I'm like thinking about bailing on a book, what I'll do is I'll skip to the last couple of chapters and I'll read them. And if I'm intrigued by the ending, then I'm like, oh, okay, this is giving me something to work towards. So I read the last couple chapters. They definitely be fucking and they are like together together. So in that sense, I pr like it's more for me in terms of what I tend to like in these kinds of books of like, they actually get together. It's less of a slow burn and they are like full on going to pound town. Um, so that's also more what I think of, of like adult fantasy romance. So it's kind of ironic that this is the one I'm DNFing, <laughs> but I just think it truly is just like the writing is not bad. It's just not what I prefer. So I would actually so far of these, if you're looking for what I think of as fantasy romance, this Carissa Broadbent would be the one I would say most closely aligns with what I think of when I think of that. But um, yeah, I still couldn't get through it. <laughs> it, just, it just wasn't to my taste. And you know, maybe because it's closer to what I'm used to doing, I feel more comfortable DNFing it because I think it's less of a like, ooh, like this is just different than what I read. I should give it more of a chance. It's like, oh no, like this is well within the wheelhouse of what I typically read. And I just know that this one is not so much for me. Yeah, okay. So I've only got two books left. We've got the Jashad... Jassad, the Jassad Air, which I've heard is great, but I've also heard a lot of people say they didn't think it was fantasy romance or romanticy. They thought it was just straight up fantasy. So I'll be interested to see how I shake out on that. And then we will cap things off with The Harvest Bride. So I've got two books left and I make myself some coffee. I do want to do some more knitting. I am like, so my, I pick up a new, I've started picking up a new hobby every winter because I'm an autoimmune girly. So I keep my butt at home during cold and flu season slash COVID season. Uh, so it's knitting this year. And like there, I, when I tell you there is something that like hypnotizes my soul while knitting, there is some, it like time, hours pass, I look up and like time has passed. I don't know what it is. So I'm obsessed and it also is like a very dissociative hobby without having to be on my phone. <laughs> so I'm really into it. So I definitely want to knit today, but I'm hoping I can make some good progress on the Jassad Air as well. Um, so I also have some chores and stuff to do, but that is the plan for today once I make myself some coffee.
we started this crazy journey together. Um, yeah, I'm done. I finished the books. <sighs> I have thoughts. So, I finished the Jashad, Jashad Air by Sarah Hashem. And I read this yesterday, guys, and I'm already starting to forget it. It's very long for me to remember so little about this. <laughs> okay. I don't even want to talk. Just read the back of the book and what the back of the book says is the book. Like if you've read the back of the book, I don't think you need to read this book. It's fine. The first quarter of it was more into because it had, you know, they were building up the world and the tension and the, ooh, you know, are they going to get togetherness? bit. So we've got Aaron and we've got, oh God, what does she go by at first? Um, Sylvia. Sylvia's got a hidden identity. She is the titular Jassad Air. And she can't let anyone know that she is because of the magic and the politics. And it's just such a YA book. I, this is YA fantasy, which is fine, but that's not what it's being presented as. And I'm sure as the series goes on, there'll be more, you know, that makes it less YA. But if you had just told me blindly to tell you the age categorization and genre of this book, I would say it is a YA fantasy, not an adult romanticy. So not even new adult, in my opinion, like this is a straight up like chosen one hidden royalty. And if you like those tropes, then I think this is a pretty competent version of it. It's a debut, I believe. And if I'm correct in that, then it is particularly impressive because writing's hard and writing something that like reads pretty decently is also hard. So yeah, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that this is her debut. So yeah, I mean, good on her. It's also like, uh, it's set in sort of like ye fantasy Egypt. So that's, that was different. I like that as a setting. I believe she is Egyptian American. So, you know, if you're looking for that kind of representation or background, you know, that is a part of the story of this book. But I just think like, it's okay. It's fine. But I've already started to forget. Like I remember far more about how I was trying to increase enough in my knitting to make sure I had enough stitches before I split for the sleeves and body. I remember far more about that from yesterday than I remember about this. So I just think it's forgettable and it does not, it's not a romance in my opinion. Not a, or it's not a genre romance. I would describe this as YA fantasy with a romantic component. So I gave it three stars, it's fine, but not what I was expecting or wanting. I was actually hoping it was going to be like a really good fantasy, even if it wasn't really a romance. But uh, then I started The Harvest Bride by Katie Wilde yesterday and I finished it today and it was a delight. And I think it says a lot that far and away my favorite things in this were from an author I already know and like in what I consider to be true adult fantasy romance. Um, I will say that I keep thinking about The Midsummer Bride, which was the first book I read. So I am going to bump that up to a four and a half. And I would give... The Harvest Bride, a four. It's a novella, so there's a little less meat, but I thought for the length, page length that had, it did a pretty good job of developing an internal and external conflict. There is a demon loose in um, one of the lands that we saw during the Midsummer Bride, and we also met the hero in the Midsummer Bride. They like saved the land, basically, in that book, and now he's back and he's hunting demons to try to rid the land of that, but also like getting his happily ever after. And I thought it was very sweet and very lovely and very smutty and clearly written for adults. So honestly, at this point, that was like a huge W for me. So what am I, what is my takeaway? I'm very glad that I did this project because I think it was, it's always good to kind of test the boundaries of your taste in books. I don't know, like it's a big trend right now. I kind of wanted to like see what the deal was and get my own perspective on it. And I think I am I was pretty spot on in my initial hypothesis, which is actually I'll make a modification. So my original hypothesis is that romanticy is really just what people are calling new adult romance. And I am going to modify that and say romanticy is what people are calling new adult or upper YA romance. So I am going to tread very lightly when people label something as a romanticy because 
I do not think that you are guaranteed to have what I would describe as an adult book. I think that a lot of the trope sets, smut level, um, character maturity and development level are actually YA often or like upper YA. And that's not necessarily, a, that's not a good or a bad thing. It's just not what I am looking for if I'm reading something primarily for the romance. Like if I'm wanting the romance first, I want them to be grown, period. Like I feel kind of weird and icky reading about romances between young adult. Like I really struggle with contemporary YA rom romance. Like I've not really had many of those I've enjoyed because I'm an adult and I feel weird really getting in deep and like rooting for a romance between children, right? I mean, like, I know that they're like on the verge of adulthood, but legally in the US and in the planet Earth versus the fantasy world, um, they are still technically children. And it's just, I feel weird about it if it gets too detailed or too into that. Yeah, that is, I think particularly with the Hurricane Wars, I think you guys saw my discomfort there. With this one, I felt less of that because it is just so why I, like there's no smut, I believe at all. I think there's a kiss and that's it. I just think the risk is too high. If I pick up something labeled as a romanticy, that I'm just gonna be uncomfortable because it's gonna, I just don't want a romance between people who are not reading like an adult. Yeah, I think that I mostly think, I, I believe my hypothesis was mostly validated. I will say though, Carissa Broadbent is, is I'm gonna say that I would, I would be more inclined to pick this genre up if I was more confident the books were like hers. Because yes, it was like, it, it was incorporating the kind of YA writing style, but the tropes did not feel as driven by YA trends. Um, and I did believe the people involved were adults. Like it, it felt like it had more of a mature sensibility to it. So even if it was incorporating some of the writing style and maybe some of the tropes, the characters did not read to me like children. So you could kind of get into it more. It's just not a flavor that I often and often am in the mood for. So I don't know that it's something I would reach for a lot. But if there are romanticies that are more in that vein, that I could be more persuaded to pick up. Uh, like I would read something else from Carissa Broadbent if it had the right synopsis and, you know, I was in the right mood. So I think that of the four that were nominated in the Goodreads Awards and that I picked based on what Olivia was reading. That is the one that to me felt closest to what I would traditionally have called fantasy romance. But I think that it is maybe like, if there's a spectrum, it's the furthest along while still feeling new adult. It's the closest to feeling like adult fantasy romance. And I would say this one feels the most like YA fantasy. So if that's the spectrum, I'd kind of put them on opposite ends. I would put Hurricane Wars here, and then I would put Assistant to the Villain. It, it definitely felt like it was targeted at adults. So I'll give the Assistant to the Villain that, even if I had other problems, like I didn't feel like it was verging on YA. So while sadly, I don't think I found like new favorite authors or new authors who I'm like chomping at the bit to read more from, this did give me excuse to catch up with the Deadlands <laughs> series from Katie Wilde, which I would highly recommend. Um, and I think it just, you know, I'm not gonna let myself feel left out of some of the romanticy trend because I just don't think it's for me. I think it really is, which I, I love, like this is Pathways, Gateways, a book for every reader, a reader for every book. This is for people who are adults now and do feel weird <laughs> about reading smut for people who are under 18. Um, and they are looking for a lot of that same kind of emotiveness and drama and writing style and tropes. They're looking for a lot of that, but they want it with slightly aged up characters. I think that this is that. And if it keeps, um, you know, 15 year olds from getting some kind of like BDSM in their books that are supposed to be aimed at them. Like, I think that's a great <laughs> improvement rather than continually aging up YA 
at the expense of actual young adults who I just think deserve to have books that are truly aimed at them for where they are developmentally like that. It, I, it's not, I don't have the whole moralizing of like, why are adults reading YA? Like that doesn't really bother me. It's more the opposite side of like, okay, but like 14 year olds deserve to have, you know, something that is developmentally appropriate for them if it, it's supposed to be targeted at them. So for the sake of that, and for people finding actually what they're looking for in a book, I'm glad to see that romanticy is, you know, live, laugh, loving right now. Um, I just don't think it's a trend for me. And I'm going to stick with my Kindle Unlimited fantasy romance slash monster romance, because that's really, I think those are kind of my sweet spots. And also sci-fi romance. I didn't explore any of that in this, but there's also a lot of great sci-fi romance out there in the kind of speculative romance firmament. So we didn't, there's not even a rom sci-fi C. I don't know what's the like portmanteau that we would do for new adult sci-fi romance. Leave your suggestions below in the comments. Anyway, uh, I hope this was interesting. I definitely found, even if I didn't find books that I was like obsessed with, I, I think this was productive and an interesting experiment. Uh, so let me know if you've read any of the, these books, if you have thoughts about them, if you think I'm missing something in terms of what the distinction here is, or if you think that there isn't really as much of a distinction as I'm drawing, definitely be interested in people's perspective below, because like I said, this was me exploring and trying to come up with some language to talk about this emerging category that we're seeing marketed to right now. So with that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, well, first of all, go check out Olivia's video. I will definitely make sure to link it in the description, in the cards, wherever. So thank you to her for the inspo. And so go check that out. And then if you enjoyed the video, also give me a like, hopefully like subscribe, turn notifications on if that's your thing. Uh, you can follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I've got all that information listed in the description box. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye.